Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about envelopes and our FM synthesis. So we now understand ratios, modulation relationships, routing, r harmonic series, phase, all. You've got quite the knowledge. Now let's talk about some ways we can manipulate this. Now this will change from synthesizer to synthesizer, but any good FM synthesizer is going to give you some of these options. One of them is attack, decay, sustain, release, an envelope. These are actually, people would say that they're ADSR. They're actually much more than ADSR envelopes if they're good. Maybe you wound up with just an ADSR envelope. I don't know. But if we come over here to the envelope tab underneath our um, volume. So what's going on here when we turn this knob? Well, we're changing the volume of this particular knob. We can, in Citrus, turn individual knobs on by themselves using an envelope. So what's an envelope? Well, go watch my Sound Synth Basics on envelopes. And I also have them in the in the Harmer series. They cover envelopes, but I'll give you a quick rundown on an envelope. So we have an envelope. You turn it on via this button right here. It might be different in your VST. And as we turn it on, it will turn on like whatever, however we can figure it to control what. So this is controlling the volume on operator one. So it's essentially the same thing as turning this knob. And as we turn it on, it our modulation will increase in volume. So this is essentially our modulation index. It'll go up and then it will go down. As long as I'm holding the note, it will stay at this value with the S stands for sustain. And then when I let go, it will release. People will call this a simple four stage, but this is unique in that you can add as many stages as you want and you can do all sorts of black magic. That was not, did not used to be possible in the analog days. So what is the deal with some of this? Well, I can sync it to the tempo, which is a feature that may not exist in your VST. And I can create a sequence of some kind and loop it through a particular part of my envelope. There's all these things. So I, again, I'm going to refer you to my Harmer video in the Harmer from the Ground Up series. Go look at that one on envelopes. It says envelopes in the title. I, I believe it's uh, somewhere in the middle of the series. So we're going to talk about using this as a creative tool. I'm not going to talk about how to like use an envelope. I'm going to talk about it from a creative standpoint in FM. So, for example, we could have our sine wave modulate into a saw wave by self-feeding back it back into itself. Now, this thing right now is all the way on. This has to be all the way on for this envelope to register because this is basically what this knob sets whatever the top value is. This value down here is always zero. So as I play my notes now. Oh, that's pretty cool. What if I set it on a loop? So I could come over here. I could hit loop start. And I could bring this down. And then I could come over here and hit sustain. Let me delete this. Delete. Oh, yeah. This is a little more complicated than I had anticipated. Okay. Let's start at decay. Sorry about this. Loop start. There we go. Okay, so it turns. We want it to turn on. Reach this point and go to the previous point. And then when we let go of our note, we pretty much want it to turn off instantly. Let me move this. So it's going to do something like that. What the heck? I'm happy with this envelope. So, and we see that it's looping based on our envelope. I can even, uh, I've engaged it to tempo so I can bring this up closer. And it's using our FM. It's just turning our FM on and off. This is a, this is, that's, I jumped to a pretty extreme example right off the bat. But let's do something more simple. So let's go to default. So let's say I want to make some sort of a bell tone. Let's say I'm aiming for, or maybe a piano type tone. Well, what I could do is, uh, pianos have harmonics that are related, but the upper stuff is sort of unrelated when you get into the upper range. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it on a sine wave. I'm going to turn my envelope on. Uh, uh, piano's volume starts at the top and then it just, it just decays out. I could spend here, uh, I could spend quite a bit of time here just messing with the envelope. And they generally have a little more, a 
little more texture these E pianos do. So I'll add some triangle wave to it. Now we're going to modulate it. I'm cool with that. We're going to modulate it by another. I'm going to make it a high ratio. So I can fade it out or I could do something like this where I turn. Now I'm, I'm turning two's envelope on. I'm going to have two fade out. Maybe get some sort of a harpsichord type feel. I'm going to do that with three as well. And what I can do is I can make them not so severe. Now I might want to pick things that are harmonically related like 12 and maybe four for this one just to keep it from two. Now I have not, I generally want to stay away from external processing, but I could also add a reverb. An EQ, if an EQ is a big one. And this isn't the exact timbre I'd want. I'd probably mess with different modulators and things. But as I move up, move up the spectrum, I can sort of move. That's a little, that's too. I could make three a bit more like so and add a reverb. Maybe not so loud. You see, we're getting closer to that piano sound, that bell bell sort of tone is there. If I wanted to go bell tone, I could totally do it at this point, but piano is a little more difficult. A little touchier. Probably want a sustain. On my reverb, I might want to turn my dampening off. This crossover controls where that's at. I don't. This, this frequency right here could be a bit lower. Let's do something like, still related. So 4, 16, 32. Um, let's do go 16, let's do 24. So that's pretty good. We got a, we got an all right piano. I could keep, I could keep tweaking it. I could uh, come over here, maybe make this a saw, a triangle. I clean up the spectrum a bit. We can hear some of that oscillation happening. Now the thing about, we could take that away. That's the number that's gonna, that's giving us that sound. Um, we could try modulating two by three a little. It'll create variation as we play because those things will cascade as we saw with our low. So we get a variety of timbres as we move from the low ratio video. Now, okay, so that's a that's great. That's piano. Whoop did you do? Things like strings, you don't need that much FM, if any, to really accomplish a string sound. FM would be more for variation. Now let's go to let's open up another citrus. If uh citrus. And let's try making a, a bass tone, which I've done several times in this series, but let's make another one. So, okay, and we'll use envelopes this time to create a sort of arpeggiator like I did at the beginning. So I could make this uh, a one. And let me turn the reverb off. That's going to be a thing. Okay. I want a saw wave. What the heck? I'll get the saw wave from here instead. It's a little more full filled. So, uh, okay, let's modulate it by two. Let's make two uh, square wave, not a square wave, a triangle wave. Let's turn on the oversampling. Now let's bring it back. Cool, 
cool. Now I'm going to take the volume. Well, I'm going to take the envelope and modulate it to the volume. So it's controlling this volume. Um, cool. So let's do something like this. So it'll start. At this point will be our loop start. We're going to bring it up to the top. We're going to have it the volume. So remember, this is the max value. So it's going to come up to here and go back to zero, which is actually up and down. So we're going to go down. And we're going to go ahead and do something. We're going to tempo sync it. And we're going to go do, 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 do. You know, something like massive performer tab. Something similar to that. So we're like that, like that, like that. So we're saying uh, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. in a rate. And this decay is going to be so fast that it should be negligible. I could move this up if I wanted to. Now we need to come up with some... Oh, that decay is not negligible. Okay. Let's... Now let's make it low or let's cascade it with another low ratio. Let's bring one up and make it. I like triangle. That works. That works. For me. So we're getting some of that, some of the bend, but we've got a pretty precise sound. This is giving our triangle wave an interesting relationship. Let's try switching these, you know? It'd be kind of an interesting deal. It's definitely not as clean. It may be something we're looking for, though. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's add some high harmonics. Let's parallel route something in here. And you know, I'm gonna leave three's envelope off. I'm gonna parallel route four, and I want a similar envelope to envelope two. And one of the neat things about this is I can come over here, I can copy state, and I can go over to four, and I can paste state. And boom, the envelope is copied over. So once you make your envelope, you do not have to spin forever doing crazy junk. I could, I, I want to make it an octave above. And bring the modulation in. It'd be interesting to add a high harmonic into two. So my uh, high harmonic. Not too high. <laughs> Sounds a little messy. I like I like those types of that's bad for your speakers and your headroom, just so you know. But it could be a nifty creative sound, so you might run with it and sort of compensate for it as you're mixing. That's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's add a hertz offset by like 15 to 3, just to give it, I don't know. This will always be added, so the effect will be greater in the low end than it will be in the high end because the hertz will become less and they'll become closer together. 15 will matter less and less. So that's an example of a bass tone that we can use and we're using envelopes to modulate them. So one other thing you can do that can be accomplished a similar way, and I was gonna do a separate video for this, but it's it's so simple that you should get this. Now in FM8 real quick, FM8 has, ooh buddy, FM8, if you go into operators, they have envelopes that are really similar. And what's cool is their navigation's a little different. I, I like that for some reason. But you can do essentially the same thing. And you can tempo sync it. Click that, it will tempo sync. And this is all covered in my FM8 video. So it's the same, it's the same deal. So same envelope, same capabilities. Okay, so let's open up one more and let's give you one more example. This time we're gonna use a low frequency oscillator. So this is an oscillator that is below, I think it's funny that they included LFOs. I mean, it makes sense, but it's still kind of funny. So we're gonna turn our LFO on and we're gonna do the volume and our LFO, so it's targeting the volume of one. Well, let's do the default patch. Let's turn on a sine wave and let's uh, make, let's make two modulate one and we're gonna, Okay, so LFOs, go watch one of my LFO videos. Just look up LFO on my channel. You'll find a video that explains LFOs somewhere because I've done this in several videos. So I'm not going to explain what an LFO is. But 
you should, if you now that you've watched that video or you at least know what I'm talking about, you know that that can accomplish something very similar to an envelope, only it will be a running change. So it's just a different way to accomplish sort of the same goal. <laughs> Now let's uh let's make this more. I like that one stuff. So it's just entertaining to watch. Okay, I got a little carried away. I'm making moves now without saying anything because you should not be shocked at some of the stuff that I'm doing anymore. So, let's do... Let's take the tension off. I want some upper end on my stuff. It sounds a little dry. That's so good. Okay, let's uh let's add some upper stuff here too. And on the square wave. Just a little no, that's gonna be too quick. I don't want something that does that. It's gonna be too noisy. It's gonna be too noisy. That crackles from the square wave pulse wave i don't like that necessarily but see this something now i know where it's coming from oh you can just create So again, I'm getting carried away with sound design. But anyways, that's just FM. Like I haven't even added distortion or effects or anything else. Like watch this. If we add distortion, we need to start getting some something really interesting. Uh, dynamics, wave shaper. I'm sorry. I normally have an enormous thing, but I haven't loaded up all my plugins in this version yet. So here we go. That might be something you want. You can come over. Maybe the high end's too much for you. There's tons of options. I have a whole video on the Wave Shaper too, if you're curious about the Wave Shaper. Because I may, because I, as you can see, I can see I don't want high end. And I can come over here and I have a general idea of where high end is. This isn't necessarily where all the high end lives. But uh, it's usually the softer stuff because of how amplitude works out. So usually it's hanging around here. But uh, yeah. So that's uh, self-control. This could be great for timbres for achieving anything from. 
I have the wave shaper on. Anything from the piano, which I could honestly work on quite a bit more still. From we didn't really make a sound with that. Oh, okay. Let's try that with our distortion. Oh yeah. There's our uh you know our bass sound be using envelopes and you're gonna find these they're just gonna be super handy you could i'm gonna do one more i just i just get addicted to this so okay we could take something and i'm not gonna over sample this time we could just try something interesting we could take our volume envelope and we could just try oh well duh that knob's not doing anything i need to put on one just make something interesting real fast. Let's make this one really long. <laughs> let's make four. Let's do the end. Let's make it like super fast, but let's make it come in way like a stupidly long envelope. Make it linear. Let's make it concave. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. Okay. All right, I lied. <coughs> Turn it over sampling on. That my uh, computer can't take that much processing. Like 64 is a lot. I'm going to take it. It is quite intensive. <laughs> I'm not I don't have a particular goal, which is one reason why also <laughs> these things are kind of just going in weird directions. If I had a particular goal. Just look at that. It's just entertaining to watch. So yeah, that's uh that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Um This may be the last video. Unless I come up with more concepts. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Hopefully you've come up with really creative ways to use FM. After this, it's all effects and stuff, which I have other videos for that. This, hopefully you understand how to generate textures and just some, some of those elementary things. Uh, yeah, this is a series I've been looking forward to doing for a while. Now, I will be doing a Citrus from the Ground Up, and I will be approaching sound design with, where I do go after specific goals with FM, but I will include processing and the full capabilities of the plugin. Because uh, right now I've been limiting myself to FM. I know I said I was going to use FM8, but I just didn't. But I could if I want. I mean, it's the same thing. I, s I have another video where I say I'm a citrus guy. I just like citrus. It's what I use. However, what are some of the things? I cover them in that video, citrus versus FM8. Uh, but, for example, FM8's parameters that are uh, automatable is every, like literally everything you can touch and citrus. Not so you can't do these. You have to use these. There's a number of implications from doing it from here specifically. Like if we have three going into a whole bunch of sources and we move this, it's moving all of them. And as a result, uh, that's as a result, that is no bueno. I just sort of moved these. I didn't really think about it when I was saying it three, if I want to modulate three by three. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Wanted to make sure it was vertical. So, yeah. Good stuff. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing Wolves. Reversing.